Income Statement and Balance Sheet Beginning of a Higher View We have reached the income statement and the balance sheet at the end of an accounting period. We shall now study them from a higher view. Here is the income statement that records operations and profit generations over a whole accounting period. And here is the balance sheet at the end of the accounting period. And we are like a kid who has a violin for the first time in his hands. So in the next few lectures, we shall learn how to play the violin. And in truth, it will take years. These numbers here come from the following journal. I changed once again a little bit the numbers. And we have next to the journal the inventory monitoring sheet, essentially to compute the closing stocks. From the journal, we produce the following trial balance with the normal accounts. And we added some adjustments. These numbers do not come automatically from the journal. You have to decide uh, the amortization schedule of the van and the machinery, and you have to decide how much provision you shall pass for bad clients. You must make sure that you can prepare by yourself this trial balance from the journal, from the journal here. And from this trial balance, you must make sure that you can prepare by yourself the income statement and the balance sheets that are here. Income statement and balance sheet. The income statement is comparatively the simpler of the two documents. You remember, it is prepared over a whole period, whole accounting period. It can be prepared, in truth, over any period of time, T1 up to T2. It measures sales and all the costs to produce the sales, and it yields the profit or loss. But we must understand that some transactions do not impact the income statement. In other words, the income statement is only a document recording profit generation, sales minus cost. For instance, suppose, because we have a lot of cash, that we decide to invest some of this cash into short-term financial securities. This is done on what's called the money markets. Well, we shall see that there will be no immediate impact on the income statement. Doing this is called parking money, parking money to, to make it work. So here is the impact on the balance sheet. There will be a simple change in the asset side of the balance sheet, and that's it. Here are the assets before, with 2,200 euros of cash and no short-term financial securities. And after this transaction, the, if we uh, spent 1,500 euros of cash into short-term financial securities, the cash now becomes 700 euros and we have a new account on the asset side of the balance sheet 1500 euros in short-term financial securities mostly government bonds here's another example suppose we buy some more machinery financed by a new loan of 1000 euros because the machinery costs 1000 euros well on the asset side uh, the machinery account will have a balance going from 5,000 to 6,000 euros. And on the liability side, the loan account will go from 2,000 euros to 3,000 euros. Here is the balance sheet before. And here is the balance sheet after this new loan to finance machinery. So the machinery was 5,000, it becomes 6,000, and the loan was 2,000, it becomes 3,000. Now let's turn to some vocabulary concerning the balance sheet. On the asset side, the top part listing machinery, van, and the so-called cumulated amortization, because there may be amortization from past cycles, this is called the net fixed assets. And if we forget about the amortization, just this part here is called the gross fixed assets. 
whereas the other part here is called the current assets. The names are natural. These are fixed for quite a while, and these turn. They are current. And on the liability side, let's see also some vocabulary. On the liability side, we distinguish three parts. First of all, the capital and the so-called cumulated net profit, that is the profit of the year and possibly profits of past years. And this is called the net worth of the firm. The second account here is a long-term loan, long-term debt, and this part I call the costly debt, because this is debt that costs money. And finally, these accounts here I call the free debt. Some people also call them sometimes trade debt. Because here, these last three parts, three uh, uh, credits, you don't have to pay uh, financial charges on them. They are free until you pay them. Whereas here, when you borrow money from a bank or any other lender, you have to pay interest charges every year on that. That's why these are costly and these are free. Altogether, these are called external liabilities, whereas these are not really liabilities. We can view them as money sort of somehow due to the, the uh, owners, that is the shareholders, but in truth they are not due. It's just a representation of the worth of the firm for the owners. We shall have many more calculations about the real value of the firm for the owner uh, if they were to sell that. And one last term, the net worth plus the costly debt, that is the debt that uh, you have to pay for on a yearly basis, this is called the capital employed. We shall have plenty of opportunity to see again these concepts of net worth, costly debt, free debt, and capital employed. But once again, the capital employed, that is the net worth plus the costly debt, is a very important concept.